Ladies and gentlemen, we are back with another interesting interview with Marco Romero today. Marco, it's, it's nice to see you virtually after we met for the first time at the Munich show. Um, honestly, I didn't know your company at all. Shame on me. And I think many investors will have had the same problem. What was your impression uh, about our event? I enjoyed meeting many, many people in Munich. It was a good conference. Uh, we were kept very busy at our booth. Uh, had lots of conversations. Um, it was very interesting to learn of the things that are of interest to uh, the investors that attended the conference, uh, to answer questions, uh, and to sort of get into the, the, the psychology um, of these investors and, and what is it that they are looking for. Hmm. So a great opportunity for us to expose our company, our, our little known company. Mm -hmm. Mm. Yes, very good. Today we move into the, uh, the field of the first non-precious metals company. We so-called we diversify into manganese. Uh, Euromanganese owns the or controls the biggest manganese deposit in Europe. Uh, not many do not uh, know this. Uh, it's, it's a deposit that comes from old mining um, and you plan to reprocess this Uh, I call it tailing that remains from uh, previous mining. The environment, environmental aspects for this project must be really stunning, very positive, with many advantages. Um, I show our audience before you reply quickly the, uh, the, the project for a moment. Here we see uh, an area view of your Qualitise project. Interesting one, um, we see there such um, fields, those are the fields with the previous remains of mining, those are the tailings. Yes, so we, we showed it to our, um, our audience briefly how the project looks like, um, but manganese, um, okay, we know steel and gold and silver, but what about manganese? Traditional, uh, traditionally, manganese uh, is used in the steel and uh, aluminum industry to make alloys, helping to, to hardening and uh, make metal more corrosion resistant. 90% of this metal is used in the steel industry, but its use in the uh, battery industry is rising dramatically, uh, in particular in lithium ion uh, batteries. The, the, the most dominant formula there uses uh, nickel, manganese and cobalt. Um, and the demand for manganese is projected to increase dramatically. And before I give you the word again, uh, Marco, I will show um, a very interesting graphic that shows how the um, demand for manganese is projected to increase in the next couple of years. So here is the graphic. Um, please explain to our audience how to interpret this graphic and what those two main components of manganese products, HPMSM and HPEMM, uh, mean. Manganese is a critical steel making ingredient, as you correctly uh, mentioned, but it's also an extremely important ingredient in a wide variety of batteries, including conventional dry cell disposable batteries. It's been used for that for a very, very long time. More recently, in the last few decades, manganese has found a very important role because of its very unique electrochemical properties in lithium ion batteries. It's been used since the early days in many of the batteries that you find in electronics including your, your, your telephones, your iPhones and others. And what has uh, recently happened is that with the advent uh, of electric vehicles, uh, the battery manufacturers have had to go look for ways to get great energy and power density and performance with these batteries and safety and many other uh, qualities and manganese fits in extremely well because it brings a stability uh, to, the, to the chemistry of these batteries, but it also allows for power 
uh, for acceleration, the rapid draw of energy out of these batteries. And uh, a particular uh, chemistry, this NMC cathode chemistry, has emerged now as the dominant chemistry in the world. And that is expected to continue growing um, with the evolution of this chemistry. So we see as the increase in production and sales of electric vehicles, an equivalent increase in demand in manganese. And that is precisely what we aim to satisfy. Uh, we are also very focused on producing extremely high quality products because with the clear focus that the automakers have on producing safe batteries that have high performance, reliability, long life, um, the purity, the quality of the ingredients that go into these batteries is very important. But I also want to stress that the automakers, the battery companies, the governments are also asking that these products be produced in an environmentally sustainable way. And we are very lucky to be uh, in possession of this deposit in the Czech Republic, which is waste. It's been sitting there for decades. And by reprocessing this material, um, we essentially would be getting metals without the need for mining because the mining has already happened. Mm -hmm. And on top of that, there's an added benefit is that we expect by reprocessing this material to clean the site, to remediate and leave it in better condition than it is today. So there are many things combining here. Um, and it's just in time uh, as the demand is growing very rapidly, particularly in Europe. Hmm. You gave me a keyword already, the, the Czech Republic. This is where your project is located. I will give uh, to our audience uh, a little map to show where it is exactly and which um, possible buyers of your project are in, in Europe. Here we see the, uh, the location of the project in the middle of Europe and you are close to Germany, Belgium, Hungary. There are everywhere big uh, car factories and more battery uh, factories are planned to be built. I think it's a very interesting location and we have to mention to our audience also that the main sources for manganese right now are, I would call, uncertain countries, for instance, South Africa, Gabon, China, Brazil, Australia, that's the one jurisdiction uh, granted, but it's far away and you have high transportation costs. Your project here is uh, a very good mining location or jurisdiction and in the middle of the uh, possible demanders. I think it's really a no-brainer. Yeah, and, and I, I also think the, the, the car manufacturers and other possible demanders, they must have already noticed this, did they? Well, obviously, uh, the, the awareness of this project has risen considerably as we have advanced with the project, and particularly because of this location. We stand to become the only primary producer of these high purity manganese products in Europe. There is no other deposit anywhere close to the size and quality of this deposit anywhere in the European Union. So yes, of course, this, this has attracted attention and it's allowed us to engage in some very interesting discussions about the future of this project. And uh, the project is advancing very nicely now, very solidly. Uh, we are in the middle of doing a feasibility study, which is the final stage if you want, of the planning uh, and economic assessment of the project. Um, and very importantly, we are getting ready to construct a demonstration plant, which is a scale up of the original pilot plant that we built, where we were able to demonstrate our ability to produce these extremely high purity products. And uh, during 2020, uh, there will be a great deal of activity uh, around the project, getting us ready for this final stage. Mm -hmm. uh, we mentioned already that uh, this project is a so-called a waste recycling project and uh, you avoid to uh, mill the material again, you avoid many steps that other mining companies have to do. 
and must give you a significant cost advantage. And uh, we spoke about this already, or we mentioned that already, it's a green project and you remediate burdens from the past. I would call it a very interesting project really for people who have a green investment. Well, there's no doubt that we have very significant advantages, largely because of our location right there in the middle of Europe. You know, this is a continent that right now imports 100% of its manganese mm -hmm. overseas. And on top of that, like I mentioned earlier, we don't have to do any mining. No, no violent activity of drilling, blasting, mm -hmm. crushing the material. It's already all been done. We're essentially taking a fine sandy product and directly processing it without any prior energy intensive uh, activity. From an environmental point of view and from a number of related cost advantages, this is a unique project. It's mm. clearly one of the leading projects of this type anywhere in the world. This one just happens to be in Europe. Very interesting. And uh, would you give us a, a brief update on uh, what's currently done, probably not, not too much during the winter times, and what it's planned for 2020? Um, I read in your recent uh, press releases that you uh, engaged a financial advisor and, as you just mentioned, also a company to, uh, to plan this uh, demonstration plant, uh, a Chinese company, because they have really, I, I read about it, much experience in construction, such um, factories and producing the metal. What is planned for next year? We are currently in the middle of a feasibility study, like I said. Mm. It is a critical document that allows us to essentially put together the economics and the technical plans for the project. Um, that will be ongoing over the next several months. Uh, we expect to complete it uh, well before the end of 2020. The demonstration plant is now ready to build. It's completely designed. We have signed contracts with a world leader uh, in the, this field and this technology. And I should point out that all the high purity manganese metal plants that have been built anywhere in the world for decades have been built by Chinese companies. No companies, nobody in the world has experience um, in the technology. Nobody has the know-how um, to design and build these. So we went to China and we have been working there for two and a half years with uh, you know, very experienced groups. And that uh, is expected to unfold very rapidly. Very importantly also, uh, we're in advanced stages of preparation of our environmental impact assessment, um, which is essentially the application for permits for this project. Uh, we have been doing environmental studies now for almost three years on the project. All the baseline studies are now complete. So now they're all being put together in a plan that it will be submitted to the Czech government um, for review and hopefully authorization. We've also had a very active community engagement uh, exercise. We are working very hard to involve local communities and residents into the planning, into the evaluation of the project. We want to make sure that they really understand what, what we are doing uh, and in particular, understand the benefits for their communities of us cleaning the old pollution that is on this site. And uh, that's gone very, very well. Uh, we're very pleased with the, the level of interest, the level of support that we have had to date. Uh, we've really not encountered any opposition to the project, which is very good. So having said that, um, a great deal of activity for us uh, at the project level. In parallel with all this, there's a very active uh, program ongoing right now of engagement and discussions and even negotiations with a number of companies that want to purchase this product. Uh, this is a very unique product uh, by any standards in the world, um, especially because of its environmental qualities. Um, so it's a, it becomes a green product. We, we, we probably will end up having the greenest high purity manganese products in the world and then, of course, made in Europe. Mm -hmm. And um, if we assume that everything goes well, you get your permits, I have no doubts you will 
uh, and the financing comes in, the demonstration plant uh, runs smoothly. Assuming everything goes well, when do you expect to go into the big production with a large facility? Our target is to be ready to construct this project towards the end of 2021. And then we have approximately a year and a half construction period. Um, so that would put us in production sometime uh, in the second half of 2023, mm -hmm. which is perfectly timed also at a point where we expect uh, electric vehicle production, electric vehicle sales, demand for these products to be rising quite rapidly. Mm -hmm. Um, Marco, that sounds all very good to me and um, I'm pretty sure that car producers like Volkswagen, BMW and others might have looked to you already. Could you imagine to make a deal, uh, for instance an offtake agreement and um, in exchange for that uh, they give you capital for the, uh, for the project? Would that be an idea, a possibility? I think it's premature for me to speak and you know a lot of the discussions we're having are quite confidential as you can imagine. Mm. Obviously we want to have a good strong relationship with our customers. Right now we are focused on understanding their needs, everything from the technical specifications of the product to their volume requirements and um, a lot of this is now focused on the demonstration plant. Um, we expect to be producing about 30 tons a year of manganese sulfate uh, from this demonstration plant. And we are in the process of now allocating quantities, fairly large quantities of this product to numerous um, end users so that they can test them, uh, so that they can qualify them, which is a very important process. And uh, the goal is for that to lead to those offtakes, which are going to be very important to us. We have already signed one agreement with one, um, one important group um, that needs significant quantities of these products. We expect to sign and announce additional ones soon. And uh, I think during the coming months, there will be a lot more clarity um, as to our commercial strategy and where we are going. And I think, uh, some people should be pretty impressed because we are pretty pleased with the direction that we've got right now. I saw that some uh, brokerage houses are already st already very impressed. They uh, produced some studies and gave by recommendation. I will link something um, below the video. So if, if they are uh, right with their assumptions, then potential investors could look here at several hundred percent uh, gains uh, midterm and I would suggest uh, have a look at this company. It's thinking out of the box. So far we did only gold and silver companies, but why not uh, having a look at a rapidly expanding market. Marco Romero, it was a pleasure to talk to you. And uh, obviously I wish you a Merry Christmas and good success and good luck with your project in my neighborhood. Thank you very much, Jan. And Merry Christmas to you and your viewers. Thank you. Thank you, Marco. Bye-bye.